model of, for example, a blimp. The prototype might look something like this, like a fish, with a little gondola underneath. And the model might be considerably smaller, still identically shaped, but with a much smaller length. Well, I need a pen that works. I'll try a red one. <coughs> much smaller length. And thus a much smaller cross-sectional area, for instance. If we're looking at the drag on that uh, on that blimp, then the drag force will be the drag coefficient times one half times the density of the fluid times the velocity of travel squared times the projected area. Now if we know the ratio between the length of the prototype and the length of the model, LM, we'd like to know what is the ratio of the projected areas. If we look at them from the front, that's the area that we're interested in, the big one will look something like this and the little and the little gondola underneath and the little ones much smaller it looks something like this with the little gondola underneath now if we look at the length this is about one unit long and that's about one two three four five units long so the length ratio of the prototype over the length for the model is 5 to 1. That means that all of the different lengths are 5 times longer in the prototype than in the model. Now if we'd like to find out about the area of the prototype over the area of the model, well we're going to have to take into account several different lengths. For example, the area of this circle here is going to be pi r squared. So in the prototype that will be pi r prototype squared. In the model, the area of that little circle will follow the same rule and it will be pi times r model squared. <coughs> But there's an additional area, so we've got to have the area of this little trapezoid here. Well, if we blow that up and make it a little bigger, it has three major dimensions, L1, L2, and L3. Those are the length dimensions, and the area of this section is the average of L1 and L2 times L3. So that'll be L1 prototype plus L2 prototype divided by 2 times L3 prototype. And on the bottom L1 model plus L2 model over 2, the average of those two, times L3 for the model. Now, what can we say about our prototype and our model? Well, our prototype is some constant 
times the length of the prototype. It's scaled with the length. So in this case, as C1 might be equal to, what's that, about um, 5? So 1 fifth. So that would mean that if this was 10 meters long, then C1 is 1 fifth times 10 would be 2 meters. That would make this 2 meters radius or 4 meters across. 4 meters across, 10 meters long. That looks like about the right proportion. Likewise, we can get that L1 of the prototype is some other constant times the length of the prototype. L2 of the prototype is some other constant times the length of the prototype. L3 of the prototype is some other constant, C4, times the length of the prototype. And thus, if we substitute that in, we'll get that A prototype over A model is equal to pi times C1 squared times LP squared because RP squared is just C1 squared times LP squared plus and now we'll have a half that's that half there times L1P and L2P. L1P is C2 times LP plus L2P is C3 times LP. C3 times LP all times L3P which is C4 times LP. Now if these same ratios, if the same shapes are there for the model as for the prototype, this smaller model, then R for the model must be equal to C1 times L for the model. R, whoops, L1 for the model must be equal to C2, L for the model, and so on. So that we'll have pi C1 squared L model squared plus a half C2 L model plus C3 L model times C4 L model and that'll be the ratio and if we rearrange that we'll get AP over AM equal to pi times c1 squared times lp squared, we're going to put that over here, plus a half c2 plus c3 times c4, a half c2 plus c3 times c4 all times LP squared, so that'll be times LP squared over pi C1, same shapes on the bottom, plus a half C2 plus C3 times C4 L model squared. Well, these constants they all come from just what is the shape of this thing. Now in this case we took a pretty simple shape to get these simple expressions for the constants. But no matter how complicated the shape, all of the dimensions in this direction are going to depend on the length of the prototype or the length of the model. All the dimensions in this direction likewise are going to scale that way. So we're always going to be multiplying something that's proportional to the length of the prototype by something else that's proportional to the length of the prototype to get the area. 
that cancels out. The area of the prototype to the area of the model must be equal to the length of the prototype, characteristic length, squared, divided by the length of the model, squared.